Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous day. Today is all about Chanel espadrilles. I get a lot of questions on these shoes, whether it's on my YouTube videos or on Instagram. Questions like, are they worth it? What's the wear and tear like? What do you expect? Are they comfortable? And things like that. So I figured I would do a dedicated video to those specific questions. So it's kind of like a review, but not really. Uh, but just to give you guys a little bit more information. I have a total of seven pairs of espadrilles. Uh, some of them are lambskin, some of them are fabric, and I also have a pair of patent leather. So that way again I can give you just that much more information if you're in the market for these so hopefully you find this video helpful and without further ado let's get started shall we I thought I would start off with the most popular question that I get and that is do I even use my espadrilles because they're always behind me they look like they're brand new or do I only have them as decorative pieces that is definitely not the case I use them quite a bit to be honest not so much during the summer only because in the summer I tend to wear flip-flops and sandals but any other time is usually when I'm rocking them uh, they end up working out perfectly for my lifestyle just because I'm such a casual dresser so I thought I would just show you guys really quickly the ones that I do have uh, like I mentioned, I have three pairs of lambskin. The first one is the all-white lambskin with the black cap toe. I also have the beige lambskin with the black cap toe. And then I also have the all-black lambskin. I also have a pair of uh, patent leather ones. These are a baby pink, and they actually have a little bit of gold flake in between them. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that. The camera's probably not capturing it very well, uh, but they definitely have a nice sheen to them. Uh, I also have three pairs of the fabric, and the fabric is different than the canvas version that's available now. Uh, but the first one is this guy here, which has the pink sequence, and this one, as you can see, the fabric is a lot softer than the canvas versions that are available now, as I mentioned. Uh, then I also have these guys these are white but to be honest they look they're almost like a silver gray and they have um, a little bit of silver threading throughout the entire uh, material and then the black cap toe and then these guys here these are just the nude ones and these also have white sequins on top so those are the pairs that I have. So as I mentioned, uh, I do use them quite a bit and I have a slight obsession with espadrilles. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm always attracted to them and I really need to just take it easy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now let's talk about comfort, and I can give you guys specifics on the three different uh, textures that I have. Uh, and I also thought that I would mention that when it comes to espadrilles, as I mentioned at the beginning, I said that I find them to be very, very comfortable. They are perfect for my lifestyle because I am a casual dresser, but the main reason why I find them to be comfortable is because I have flat feet, meaning that I don't need any type of arch support or anything like that. Uh, so for me, wearing a flat shoe, I can end up using it for eight plus hours, no problem, versus some people that might need that support support in order to wear them for that amount of time. So it really adds to the comfort of, um, you know, of these espadrilles. And that's specifically what ends up helping out for me to be able to wear them for continuous hours. Uh, all right. So when it comes to the lambskin, as far as comfort goes, I would have to say this is my number one choice. I know some people disagree with me. Some people feel that the fabric or the canvas ones are a lot more comfortable, but these to me just definitely fit the bill. And that's more so because of the lambskin or because of the leather. I feel that when it comes to leather shoes, they just end up forming to your foot perfectly. And uh, I would have to say that when I first got these, they were snug, but they weren't snug to the point where they were uncomfortable, to the point where you felt that the foot, um, that your foot was going to completely pop out of here. You know what I mean? You know, like sometimes you feel like Cinderella's wicked stepsister or something like that. You put Put your foot in and you're just thinking this is going to kill my feet that is not what you want when it comes to espadrilles you want them to be a tad snug but not too too much uh, because the lambskin or the leather as any leather shoe it will start to stretch out so if you end up getting something that um, is a tad bit snug it'll end up fitting perfectly down the line but if you end up going for a a little bit more of a loose size again because you'll end up using it over and over it'll just start to stretch out to the point where they'll just be too too loose so I always recommend them to be a tad bit snug and you want to be able to move your feet uh, or your toes in the toe box you want to be able to wiggle them around just a tad so I thought I would mention that as well so hands down by far as far as comfort goes I would have to say these uh, second I would have to say would be the uh, the fabric version 
and these do end up stretching out not as much as these do I would have to say that these probably end up stretching out at most a half size uh, so please don't quote me on that uh, I just make sure that you go into the boutique and try them out uh, but between the two this one stretched out a lot more than this one did and that's really because you have the fabric over the leather lining but uh, these were also very they were a little bit more snug in the beginning but as I started to use them they're, uh, they seem to be really perfect for my foot now. Out of the three, the patent leather is the one that really doesn't budge. It doesn't work for me as far as uh, stretching out. So with these, I was a little bit worried uh, because I felt that maybe I would have to go a uh, whole size up being a, you know, going into a 41. I end up being a 40 in espadrilles for the most part. Uh, so I thought that I would have to go for a 41 and the 41 was just way too big. It was way too, uh, way too loose. I tried on a 39 and the 30 I felt like that wicked stepsister and I was thinking this isn't gonna work <laughs> but the 40 surprisingly ended up working out perfectly uh, but these don't have a lot of give to be honest when I end up using these and I don't use these as often as the other ones this is probably my least used pair uh, these you end up feeling the tension uh i end up feeling the tension on my foot just a little bit more i can't wear them for eight plus hours with these types of shoes i can only do, do that with the canvas or with the fabric and with the lambskin more so the lambskin than any other one but these just they are gorgeous they are beautiful i can only wear them for maybe four hours four and a half hours tops uh at that fifth hour i'm just kind of like get me out of these things, get me out of these things. You know what I mean? And I'm just being honest. Everyone is going to be different, but patent leather doesn't have a whole lot of give. I haven't experienced that. Some people might have experienced that, but that hasn't been the case for me. Uh, so these are not as comfortable. They are beautiful, but they tend to, uh, <laughs> I tend to make sure I have backup shoes with me. You know what I mean? Uh, now I also wanted to add to the comfort as to why they end up working out so perfectly as well. And that is because I end up wearing socks with them. That's another question that I get is that, uh, some people say, well, they don't really have a whole lot of wear. You don't have a lot of dinginess going on or anything like that. And that's really because I end up using socks. There's really only one pair that I end up going sockless in, and that's the lambskin ones. These, I have kind of dubbed them my travel shoe. I always end up putting these in my luggage whenever I'm going anywhere. I just find these to be very, very comfortable, especially when we're flying. Uh, so these are now my travel shoes. <laughs> I mean, I still use them out and about, but I, I specifically wear them more so in in travel. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but back to the socks, because I do get a lot of questions as to what type of socks I wear. And the reason why I wear socks is because I feel extremely uncomfortable going sockless in any type of shoe. I don't like the sensation. It feels very awkward to me. So for socks, I end up going for these Keds. These are the Keds No Show No Show Socks. I got these at Costco uh, quite some time ago. I think I got, was it six or eight pairs? They were like $9.99, $10.99. I don't even remember the exact price, to be honest. And I have gone through, so I have gone crazy looking for the perfect sock for espadrilles because when it comes to sometimes these socks, they end up showing too much and it defeats the whole purpose of the no show. You know what I mean? Uh, but these end up working out perfectly. You can't even see the sock which is amazing. And it really adds to the comfort when I end up slipping my foot into these shoes. So I thought that I would mention these as well. And um, very quickly, I know I'm giving a lot of uh, time to socks, but hey, you know you know me, I tend to ramble about the things that I find to be important. You know what I mean? Uh, but these socks do have this little, um, like this little sticky thing, which allows it to stick to the back of your uh, back of your heel. So you don't have to worry that it's going to fall off or anything like that. So I highly recommend the Keds No Show Socks. If I can find them on any website, I will put them on, on the description box below. Uh, but back to the comfort, like I said, I find that all of them are great in their own way. The lambskin, hands down, 100% the most comfortable than the canvas or the fabric version onto the patent leather. And the patent leather, as I said, just ends up attracting the, those beautiful colors, but they're not the most comfortable. You know what I mean? 
I thought that I would also mention that because these are leather lined, whether you go for the lambskin, the fabric slash uh, canvas version or the patent leather, it really allows your foot to breathe. So you don't have to worry that your foot is going to get sweaty or anything like that, which I thought was really, really important. And uh, I also wanted to talk about this top part of the espadrilles. I know that they have new espadrilles out there. Some of them go all the way up. Uh, personally, I like this style the best. Uh, but if you do have high arches, you might experience that this might end up rubbing on the the top of your foot and uh, I haven't had any problems with blisters or anything like that with any of the textures that I have in my collection again it's probably because I don't have a high arch but I thought that I would mention that just in case this might end up rubbing uh, if you end up going for the lambskin it will be a lot more comfortable because as you end up wearing it it will, it will also stretch out versus the patent leather or the canvas slash fabric one it might be a little bit uh, it might be a little bit uncomfortable but again the fabric one will always stretch out just a tad and it might end up being perfect for you in the long run when you go into the boutique to try them on uh, if you notice that it ends up hitting on the top of your foot it's just something that will end up um, definitely loosening up over time um, but that's another thing I wanted to say. Make sure you go into the boutique and try them out. Uh, thankfully for me, uh, I am a size 40 in all of them, which really surprised me, as I mentioned earlier throughout the video. Uh, but, you know, if I'm a 40 in Valentino's, I might not necessarily be a 40 in a different type of style of espadrilles. So I always, always suggest going into the boutique, trying them out, see how you feel. If you absolutely want to have socks when you wear them, make sure you take the socks with you when you go into the boutique to try them out. That way you can really get a sense for uh, which size to go for. I know a lot of people get these professionally stretched out. Personally, for me, I don't recommend that, but it's all personal preference, uh, only because when it comes to getting them professionally stretched, sometimes I feel that it's a little too drastic, it's a little too much, and then it makes for a very loose uh, type of shoe versus someone being able to do it gradually by wearing socks around the house or something like that. The break-in period, it all depends. I feel that these break in the quickest and then uh, the canvas or fabric version and then into the patent leather, which I said before, doesn't really, doesn't have a whole lot of give, uh, you know, but uh, usually people end up going for either of those of these two versus the patent leather, but these just break in in a GIF, no problem whatsoever. Uh, so I thought that I would also mention that just in case you wanted to get them professionally stretched out. Like I said, everyone is different. Everyone is going to do uh, what's best for your collection. I mean, you're going to do what's best for your collection, but just for me and my own personal preference, I prefer to stretch it out myself wearing a couple of socks, nothing too crazy. And then they were able to just mold to my foot even more so as I continue to use them. Now for the wear and tear on these shoes, uh, because when it comes to any type of footwear, you are definitely going to get wear and tear. And even though when they're sitting back there, you guys might not see if if they have any scratches, if they have any uh, wear marks or anything like that, they definitely do. And you'll be able to see them more on the pairs that I end up using the most. Uh, and the first one would be the lambskin ones. As I mentioned, these are the ones that I have dubbed my travel shoes. And they have quite a bit of creasing, quite a bit of wrinkling going on. Uh, and you will start to notice that you'll see a lot of the wrinkling here just because of how you uh, end up moving with your foot. You'll be able to see that as you bend your, as you bend your foot, you'll be able to to see these lines here. If you do have a high arch, you might end up seeing a little bit of wrinkling here as you're trying to put them on. Uh, and let me just show you guys the backside. That's where I definitely see the most, or on the inside. I have a whole lot of wrinkling going on, and I'm just looking into the camera to make sure that you guys see what I see. <laughs> uh, but you can really see it here. And this is really from me trying, just put, putting them on, and sometimes they just get wrinkled. There isn't a whole lot of structure when it comes to these. And because of the soft lambskin leather, you will really end up seeing the wear and tear back here. Um, I haven't had any scratches, uh, which I'm surprised. I have actually, it looks like a little tear from the stitching right there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Uh, but I have a little bit of a tear there. It hasn't gotten any um, any worse or anything like that. I have a little bit of wrinkling going on up there. And all in all, I'd have to say that for as much as I've used these, I mean, I have put these these ones in specific through the ringer. They have really held up incredibly well. The rope here hasn't started to unravel by any means whatsoever. I know sometimes that's prone to happen because of the type of material that, it, that they are, uh, but I haven't had any issues. And then on the bottom, uh, I mean, look at this. They look, I think they look 
look really good. <laughs> I'm kind of proud of myself. Uh, they are dirty, but they're not as bad as I would have expected, uh, especially when I'm walking around in the city. I use these all the time. Uh, but one thing I will have to say with wear and tear, make sure if you do have the lambskin ones, you don't use them in the rain. Only because lambskin is not the best friend of rain. You will end up seeing water stains. You'll end up seeing those watermarks. Or uh, if you end up, if you do end up getting rain on them, just don't, I mean, just pat, pat it down with a, with a white cloth and just leave it alone. Don't rub it in or anything like that. It should be able to go away, but usually you'll end up seeing the water stains. Uh, but I've been pretty, I've been pretty fortunate with these and the way that they've worn. But like I said, you'll be able to see this a little bit more. And the more and more that I use these, these will just start to go down like this and that's expected. But when I put my foot in here, you don't really see the wrinkling. So I just thought I would mention that as well. Uh, like I said, I've gotten a lot of questions on Instagram and people send me pictures about how they get them in the mail if they get them from the boutique and sometimes they're a little bit wrinkled uh, sometimes that's just prone to happen because of the type of material that you go for so if you go for the lambskin you can be expected to see a little bit of wrinkling of course it would be I mean it would be ideal if they ended up coming out perfectly when you open up the box but just know that that's something that could end up happening so there's those and these are probably Oh, let me just show you the the white ones because the white ones I got when we were in um I got these in where did I get these Par I got these in Paris the first time we went I think so. Uh, and the white, it almost seems like it's starting to turn a little yellow. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it or not, but you can see it right here. And it hasn't really frayed too much. You can see that the rope is starting to kind of, um, let me see if I, right there, you can see it starting to kind of unravel just a tad, not too bad. I have uh, some color transfer on the back of these. It's very bright. Remember, the camera isn't the same that I, you know, because I'm going through those issues. Um, but uh, you can really see that I have color transfer here from jeans that I was wearing. <laughs> I told you guys I'm a jean girl. Uh, but they end up showing dirt quite a bit because of the color. And you can see the wrinkling that I have right here. You can see it a little bit better there. So not too, too bad. I do have a water spot on these. Uh, because I wasn't, I didn't take my own advice. All right. I didn't take my own advice. I wanted to wear them and I got a little bit of a stain. I don't know if you guys are even going to be able to see it, but it's right there. I know it's there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's my own fault. Uh, so those are the other lambskin ones and the beige ones don't really have a whole lot of wear. Uh, but you can see they have quite a bit of wrinkling here and quite a bit of wrinkling on the inside, but overall they look pretty good in my opinion. Uh, all right. Now, as far as the fabric ones, these are probably my most used. I really like these. I think these are probably my second favorite. Uh, but these have held up incredibly well. These I almost always end up wearing in the uh, probably at the back end of summer or in spring. And I would have to say that I've probably used these um, as far as comparison. If I've used these 100% of the time, I've used these 85% of the time. And I feel that these definitely end up aging the best. So I thought that I would mention that as well because these don't age the best because of the type of uh, leather, all around leather. But these, the fabric or the canvas ones, I really think feel that they uh, end up just, I mean, they look like they're brand new and um, I don't feel that they get too dingy either. I know a lot of people have commented if uh, I feel that the canvas version will get really dingy, if it'll get really dirty. It all depends on how you wear them, I guess. Uh, but I don't want to have to baby my shoes besides the rain. That's the only thing that I really think twice about. I don't really want to baby my footwear and that's just something that's going to happen, wear and tear on any type of shoe. Uh, but these have held up, I mean, very very well you can just see the slight wrinkling there and do I have I don't really have a whole lot of wear on these either these are these are just I love this I love the sequence because I'm a magpie <laughs> not too too much and then these these definitely show up a little bit dingier and I think that's just because of the type of color that the material is this almost looks like it's terry cloth do you see that it's um, it's like a bright white but then you look at it in a different light and it looks like it's gray so it might look a little it might look a little funky, you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's those. And then the patent ones, as far as wear and tear goes, you will really notice the wear and tear on the top part here. Uh, and like I said, with the movement that you create while you're walking, you'll start to see a little bit of creasing here and you'll start to see a little bit of creasing there. It might be very, uh, I mean, it might not be as noticeable to you guys, but I can definitely see it, it almost kind of pops out a little bit. Um, but again, I haven't had too many issues with the rope. 
uh, whatsoever. And the back on these doesn't have that wrinkling effect that the lambskin does, only because this has the clear coating that patent leather has. Uh, so these also look incredibly well, but they're also my least used pair. I did have another pair of, I used to call them my Michael Jackson espadrilles. They were full of black sequins. Uh, I found them to be, I mean, they were, they were somewhat comfortable, not really, not to the point of where I wanted to use them uh, as much. I think I used them twice in one year, maybe three times at most, and I felt them to be too uncomfortable, so I got rid of those. Uh, but for wear and tear, just know that the wrinkling is something that's going to happen. The unraveling might end up happening. I know that you can, uh, from what my sales associates have told me, you can actually take them into um, Chanel to get this repaired, not necessarily not necessarily the lambskin, but this uh, this part here or the bottom part. Uh, but I would still end up, uh, I would still recommend talking to your sales associates to get a little bit more information as far as um, what specifics you can get done as far as wear and tear goes. So do I recommend them? Do I think that they're worth it? I think that when it comes to anything being worth it, you have to ask yourself if it's something that you'll end up using quite a bit in your collection, if it's something that you'll end up incorporating into your daily lifestyle. If you find that you might end up using the shoes maybe two or three times a year, it might not be worth it uh, versus being able to get quite a bit of use out of them. But it's all personal preference. For me, I love espadrilles. As I mentioned, I have an obsession. Every time I see any new pair, I'm instantly attracted to them uh you know and uh, i really want to add more pairs but i just got i gotta take it easy you know as i mentioned i can't i can't get crazy when it comes to footwear i don't know what it is it's almost like i've replaced my love of handbags with footwear. <laughs> I'm going in that direction and I need to stop. <laughs> uh, but I think that these are wonderful. And more than anything, I would recommend to get them if you like them. If you sincerely like them, if you love the way that they feel, then I would get them. Don't get them if you feel that they're, uh, it's just the popular thing to get or anything like that. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because I also get questions on that. You know, should, should you get them because they're the in thing and things like that? My personal preference, my personal style I end up going for things that work out for me not what necessarily everyone uh, might find appealing you know what I mean uh, because I know there's a lot of people that don't find these cute at all because of the rope and all that stuff uh, but I know that they now have uh, the double platform which a lot of people had said that they have issues with uh, the bottom part kind of lifting off. And I'm wondering if maybe that's a way of Chanel just introducing the new platform so that it wears a little bit better. Who knows? Maybe in time. Uh, but I just think that these are fantastic shoes. You know, like I said, I use them quite a bit. So while they're back there, yes, for my videos, but I still end up rocking them any chance that I get. Just not so much in the summertime or, you know, when it's like 110 and I'm just dying, <laughs> you know, and the last thing that I want is anything covering my foot. But I hope that this video was helpful. I know it got super, super chatty, especially talking about socks, but I just wanted this to be a little bit different than a, a full on review. I wanted to specifically talk about those things that uh, I get asked the most when it comes to the Chanel espadrilles. So again, I hope that this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have already and you would like to please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when i upload videos which is anywhere from two to three times a week and i will see you guys later this week and as always make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours have a great day you guys